My name is George Dasher, and my talk today is on datums, cave links, cave depths, and pit depths. There's international standard regarding these, and this standard was first published in the United States in the January 1981 NSS Bulletin. It was subsequently published in both editions of On Station and uh, in a recent issue of the NSS News. The zero datum is the first survey station of the entire survey project. It is location 000 in the database. Those are its XYZ coordinates. All the surveys are built from this station, moving both into the cave and onto the surface. The zero datum's location should be placed on something very permanent. It should be well displayed in the sketch and well described in his notes. And it's also wise for a large project to install some kind of permanent marker, either a drilled hole or a labeled indicator. Uh, for a horizontal cave, the zero datum should be placed at the drip line. This is the vertical plane where the sun's shadow falls if the sun is directly overhead. The datum can be placed uh, on the floor, the ceiling, the a breakdown block, the walls. It doesn't matter just as long as it's somewhere permanent. For a vertical cave, the zero datum should be placed at the highest unbroken contour. This is where water, if poured on the ground, flows both into and away from the cave. And this means that any survey shots within the sinkhole can be included in both the length and depth of the cave. And you can see in the plan view on the left that station S1, the zero datum, is, at the, is in the gap between the, uh, uh, the low gap between the pit on the left and the rest of the world on the right. Uh, in reality, it's exactly the same for both a vertical and horizontal entrance. Right? You can see on the left, a horizontal entrance, there's a vertical plane at the entrance, and the survey data is, is, is placed in, uh, in that plane. And on the right is a vertical entrance with a horizontal plane uh, at its entrance, and again, the zero datum has been placed within that plane. So essentially, you place the zero datum in the plane that's perpendicular to the entrance. Cave length. Cave length is the sum of the slope distances of all the cave surveys. It is not a sum of the horizontal distance as uh, those horizontal distance is a projection, not a length. The depths of pits can be, the depths of pits and the heights of domes can be included in the cave length if you shoot up or down them. And even if you can't uh, access the bottom of the pit or the top of the dome, you can shoot up and down them using a disto or you can use trigonometry. Uh, both, both techniques are very easy. Splay shots, radial surveys, side shots, uh, surface surveys, redundant surveys, and half a circumference survey should not be included in the cave way. Um, cave depth is the difference in elevation between the cave's highest and lowest point station. It's not measured from the cave entrance unless uh, depth is not measured from the cave entrance unless the entrance is one of the uh, vertical extremes of the cave. It does, regarding depth, it does not matter if the overall trend of the cave is uphill or downhill. Uh, this is an example. Horizontal cave, entrance on the left. I'm going to use the same shot over and over. 100 foot shot at 2.5 degrees inclination. Shot one, shot two, shot three, shot four. All four shots have a slope distance of 100 feet. Together, they give a cave length of 400 feet. Once you do the trigonometry, the cave depth in this instance is 17.4 feet. Sample two, again, a 100 foot shot at 2.5 degrees inclination. Shot two is identical. Shot three is straight up a pit or straight up a dome, whichever you want to call it. Shot four and shot five are identical to the first two shots. So you've got four shots that are 100, at the slope distance is 100 feet long. One shot with a slope distance is 50 feet and together they equal a cave length of 450 feet. The cave depth in this case is 67.4 feet after you've done the trigonometry, and the pit depth is 50 feet. Sample three, shot one, shot two, shot three is now at an angle, shot four, shot five. Uh, again, four shots at slope distance of, 50, of 100 feet, one shot slope distance of 50 feet, um, and that equals a cave length of 450 feet. The cave depth this time is 65.4 feet, and the pit depth is still 50 feet. It's a uh, slope distance. And to repeat that, the pit depth uh, is the slope distance of the pit. It is not the vertical distance of the pit. 
uh, unless the pit is purely vertical and then the uh, slope distance and the vertical distance will both be equal. Uh, this means that any caver using the map to determine the depth of the pit, because he's that, because that depth is the slope distance, that caver should have enough rope to reach the bottom of the pit. Pit depth contributes to cave length. Examples. Example one um, is a purely vertical 100 foot deep pit. In this case, the cave length is 100 feet, the cave depth is 100 feet, and the pit depth is 100 feet. Example two uh, is a sloping pit, about 70 degrees inclination, negative inclination, 145 foot uh, shot. Uh, this cave, the cave length is 145 feet, the pit depth is 145 feet, but the cave depth, because it's the vertical distance between the uh, first station and the second station is only 135 feet. And this may seem a little strange that the cave depth is less than the pit depth, but um, it's legitimate. It works. Example three uh, is a, uh, they took one shot up in the sinkhole and then down the pit. Uh, the shot on the, in the sinkhole slope was 47.5 feet and the pit was again 145 feet deep. The cave length in this case is uh, two shots combined, the slope distance of the two shots combined, which equals 192.5 feet. The uh, cave depth this time, st from station one to station two, the vertical distance between the two is 160.9, and the pit depth is still 145.0. And that, folks, is it.